Hello, this is Steve from SDR Play. In today's video, we're going to look at some installation scripts that are available for the Raspberry Pi. The quickest and easiest way to get up and running with the Raspberry Pi is to use the complete Raspberry Pi images that are available for download from sdrplay.com. On the other hand, these scripts are designed for people that have an existing image they wish to use and want to add capability to that image. These scripts will install the SDR Play API, the Cubic SDR software, and thirdly, the RSP TCP server software. Here are the necessary steps. First, we download the zip file. Then we extract the scripts from that zip file. Thirdly, we make them executable, although we've done that for you, so that step is not required this time. And finally, execute the scripts. There are six scripts in the archive, and they've been conveniently numbered from one to six to indicate the order in which they should be executed. The first one is the API itself, and that will be required for just about any type of software you want to run on the Raspberry Pi. Secondly is Soapy SDR. That's required to build Cubic and may be necessary for some other SDR software. Thirdly is Liquid DSP. Fourthly is WX widgets, and then the fifth install is for Cubic SDR itself. If you're running Cubic SDR, you can gain network access to your RSP using Soapy Server. However, if you wish to gain network access using other software, for example SDR Uno, the EXTIO version, then you will also need something like the RSP TCP server and that is the sixth script that is available in this archive. So now let's log into the Pi and see how this works out in practice. The first step is to open up a web browser and navigate to sdrplay.com to download the archive. Once you get to the downloads page, select your RSP model, which in my case is an RSP1A, and then select the Raspberry Pi operating system. You will then get a choice of software categories. We can select API, and then we can look for the build scripts. Click on the download button and wait for the download to complete. Now we can find the file we downloaded to extract the scripts themselves. You can double click on the zip file and see the contents of the archive itself. And then to extract the scripts, we need to click on the extract button. For convenience, I like to extract the files to the desktop so I can find them easily later. Here you can see the file on our desktop. We can open it up and there are the six scripts that we will now go ahead and execute. There's a couple of ways you can execute the script. My preferred way is to simply double click on the file and start the script that way. You'll be asked if you want to run it in terminal and then a terminal window will open and then the script will start to run. Press return to bring up the license agreement and then you can move quickly through that by using the space bar until you get to the end of the license agreement. When prompted, press the Y key to accept the license agreement. You will also be asked a question to add this to the local database. We recommend you select yes. And then the final step is to reboot the Pi. Hit the Enter key and then wait for the Pi to restart. Now that we've installed the API, we can move on and install Soapy SDR. Unlike last time where we used double clicking on the file to start the script, this time we'll do it from the terminal. It requires opening up a terminal window and then entering a command to execute the script. 
the command to execute a script is dot slash and then the file name for the script. So we can type that into the terminal. Oops, I made a mistake. The problem is I'm not in the right directory where the script is resident. So first we have to change directory to the scripts directory on our desktop using the cd command. Apart from my bad typing, that's another reason why I prefer to point and click my way around. It can take a fair amount of time for these scripts to complete. In the case of the Raspberry Pi 3B, which I'm using here, this script takes approximately 10 minutes. So I'm going to chop this out and come back towards the end of running the script. Towards the end of the script, you'll be prompted to plug in your RSP, which gives you an opportunity to check that the installation was successful. Once this is complete, you'll be returned to a command prompt, which means we can now move on to the next step of our installation procedure. The next package we require for Cubic SDR is called Liquid DSP. I'm going back to the old fashioned way of just double clicking on the file name to start the installer running. This package takes about three minutes to install. So once again, I will edit out most of the installation pro process and just come back towards the end. Since we started this script by double clicking, the terminal window will close when the script has finished executing, assuming there have not been any problems. So once you get back to the main desktop view of the files, you know the script has completed successfully. Okay, item four on our installation trek is installing WX widgets. Again, I'm going to double click the file to start it up, but be warned, this is a big one and takes a long time to complete. This script took almost two hours to run on my Pi 3B, so feel free to go get yourself a cup of coffee or maybe take a short vacation and come back later when it's finished. Your patience will finally be rewarded when the text stops scrolling across the screen, the terminal window closes, indicating a successful completion to the installation. Finally, at last we're ready to install Cubic SDR itself. Once again, we'll double click on the file to initiate the script and then leave it to run. Again, this is another script that takes a fair amount of time to run, in this case about 23 minutes. So I will chop out uh, most of the script running and we'll be back towards the end of the script. Once the installation is complete, you will be prompted to reboot the Pi. So go ahead and do that and then when the Pi comes back, we'll run the program itself. Now that the Pi has rebooted, we can find Cubic by going to the top menu and down under Other, and we'll see Cubic SDR right there. On my Pi 3, it takes quite a while to draw the initial screen, but it does get there eventually. Now that the device's window is opened, we can see our RSP1A, so we'll click on that to select it. You'll notice the sample rate on the right hand side is 500 kilohertz. I certainly do not feel comfortable running at any higher a sample rate on a Pi 3. So having uh, set this off, we can see the uh, AM broadcast band here. 1080 is a very strong local station. So we select uh, AM mode and uh, we can fine-tune the frequency in the expanded window in the upper left and uh, and there we are we see demodulated audio on the right 
So although it's nothing like as sophisticated as SDR Uno, Cubic is actually quite a capable program. If you uh, explore the menu headings across the top of the screen, you'll see you're able to set it up to do rig control, uh, select various different sample rates, and as I mentioned before, keep that low because uh, there's not a whole lot of bandwidth available on the Pi, although it is much better if you use a Pi 4 or a Pi 400. Cubic also has the capability to make recordings, which is useful, and as mentioned before, for doing rig control for making a pan adapter. Returning to the installer scripts, there's just one remaining to be installed, and that's for the RSP TCP server. So once again, uh, we'll double click on the, uh, on the script and let it run. This is actually quite a short script to run, so we won't need to edit out any of the uh, time taken to run the script. The uh, RSP TCP server allows you to run your RSP on a Raspberry Pi and then connect to it over a network connection. This is very useful if you have a Pi installed remotely, for example, near the antenna, and you want to uh, log into that from your shack on a PC. You can use uh, SDR Uno, uh, the EXTIO version. The server is started from the terminal itself. So to run it, you simply have to open up a terminal and type in uh, RSP TCP server. If you put the uh, question mark after it, you can get a list of all the commands. What you see here is I've typed in the uh, hyphen E for extended mode. The RSP1 has been detected and it's waiting to be logged into. That's it for today. Hope you found it useful. All the uh, scripts mentioned here are available from our download section at the link shown on the screen, along with plenty of other information on how to set up your Raspberry Pi or download the pre-compiled images. 73.